Hi everyone, a very good evening and once again a very warm welcome to yet another Edelweiss classroom session. And uh, today the topic that we have chosen uh, is called the ABC of mutual funds. Uh, so very honestly, through this program, we aid, we aim at enhancing and aiding your understanding of the various mutual fund schemes, its types, its categories, your investment options, how MFs play a very, very important role uh, in your investment journey, and more impact, importantly, how it can become your go-to investment option or tool for your purpose of uh, Law, you know, wealth creation over the long term. So that's going to be my endeavor. As usual, uh, you know, please share your queries and questions in the chat. I will respond to each and every one of that, each and every one of your queries and questions towards the end. Uh, okay, so on that note, I think let's begin and, uh, you know, let's start with why do we invest, right? right? What is your reason for investment? If you remember, you know, a few uh, a, a few months back, uh, you know, we did a session on why it is important for you to have an investment goal, right? Otherwise, uh, we all invest. We all continue to invest whenever we have some money, which is which is spare. We think uh, of what is what is the best investment option, and we do invest, right? But what happens in that unplanned investment journey is, as as the investment is unplanned, its its utilization is also uh, unplanned. And very very, you know, as and when uh, you know you require money, you start you start you start pulling it out, and Nothing wrong in that. But the problem in this is, you know, that constant thing that I want to create something for a purpose is not there, right? So it could be any reason. It could be, uh, you know, your aspirations or goals. It could be traditional goals like retirement, children, education, house. It could be exotic goals, uh, uh, you know, that you have. Whatever reason, maybe. but think of a reason. It could be to, to ensure that you have enough... Uh, no, for any uncertainty, it could be that you you just want to ensure that you have more than inflation. What is inflation? We'll come to that in subsequent slides, and you know why it's important uh, for us to look at uh, look at this this important aspect while investing. It could be any reason, but think of a reason to invest. It's it's extremely important. Moving on to, like I was saying, inflation inflation is generally. Uh, we talk of inflation as something which, due to which, uh, you know, there is an increase in the price of goods and services over a period of time, right? So things get expensive and expensiveness is inflation, right? So just to give you an example, if you had one lakh rupees and let's say you didn't do anything about it. Today, so in one lakh rupees, you know, 10 years earlier, what it could buy, the purchasing power that one lakh rupees had, Today, that purchasing power has, has come down to almost half at about 50,000 rupees. So if you did not ensure that you're getting more than inflation, what you could buy 10 years back with 1 lakh rupees, goods that you could buy worth 1 lakh rupees. Today, technically keeping the same, keeping that same, to keep looking at the same goods, you'll be only able to buy goods worth 50,000 during that time. So today you can only buy half. Uh, right. Another example of inflation that we have over here is, you know, petrol 10 years back was close to about 43 rupees. Today it's at 106, so two and a half times. Now, what happens generally is because I am working, I am earning, you know, my, my own income levels have gone up. I'm able to somehow manage this inflation today. But will I always be able to manage this inflation? That should be a very, very important question. And hence, our investments, wherever we make, it is extremely important that we, we keep in mind what is the general inflation level uh, that I am seeing. And we should ensure that the returns that I generate on my investment should be above that inflation level. Otherwise, I will make money, but not enough to even buy those things which was at pre-inflation or pre-investment, 
right? And hence, it's very, very important to, to keep inflation at the core of your decision making and, and beat inflation when you are investing. You know, so where to invest, right? There are so many options. There are equity markets. Uh, you know, we know over a long term, equity markets have generated returns. Uh, you know, decent returns, and uh, you know, uh, they 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 are they are an instrument through which you know you you may be able to generate uh, you know uh, decent returns over the long term. And then there are fixed income markets. So in fixed income, also uh, you know the reason why. We, we do look at fixed income instruments it's predominantly because there is, an, there is an element of safety and stability which I seek in my investments, which is absolutely uh, absolutely correct for all of us. We, we cannot have all our money invested uh, in, uh, in riskier assets, which are a little extra volatile. And so fixed income is an option also. Then there is gold. So uh, we, we also look at investing in gold. So there are a lot of investment investment options in gold. So there are there are gold bonds backed by government. There are gold funds. There are a lot of stuff that happens over there also. And there are a lot of investors taking advantage of this and looking at investing in gold predominantly uh, as a hedging or inflation hedge. That's, that's predominantly why, why people invest in gold. Then there's real estate. And real estate, uh, you know, uh, last couple of years, probably a little muted, but over a period of time, you know, a lot of people, uh, the challenge with real estate is that if I want to invest in real estate, I also need a substantial purpose to start with. Uh, real estate is not cheap. And so maybe real estate is not an option on the table for each and every one of us. But these are predominantly the options in which uh, most of us have most of our investments. Right. It is very, very important whenever I'm investing that I'm able to maintain a balance between returns and the risk that my investments may get exposed to. And hence, uh, it may not be a great idea for any one of us to invest only in one asset class. It is important that we invest across different asset classes in order to ensure that we get decent returns as per our expectation as well as we are able to manage the risk associated with investments sufficiently well. And that is where I think mutual funds can become your go-to tool because mutual funds have a basket of investments across, across these asset classes and they help you uh, with your investments and in your investment journey. So coming to what exactly are mutual funds, right? And very honestly, how do you use them? First of all, like I was saying, think of why are you investing? Uh, you know, basis your investing, understand your risk uh, and your return expectations. Basis that invest in mutual fund schemes and let the mutual fund schemes or the experts who are managing these schemes, the fund manager and the fund management team, let them do their job as they are the experts in order for you to generate your expected returns, right? That's predominantly the cycle that, that mutual funds can help you follow. Uh, and uh, the, good, the, the important part over here to remember is uh, mutual funds are predominantly managed by experts, right? Fund management team is an expert team, right? It's their job. And hence, uh, you know, like you and I are also doing some job that we are good at. This is their job. So they do this day in and day out. So obviously their expertise, their knowledge about this is far better than us individually. And hence, I think this, this, is, a, this is something which we should we should we should be very very cognizant and and trusting with uh, you know because they are the ones who can actually uh, you know know or know better about how the investment cycles are working and take take better calls and individual calls that you and I make in order to strategically position their portfolios uh, which would be best suited for you and me to make returns through investing in the schemes that they are managing. 
So that's how I think mutual funds can be a very, very strong tool in assisting us in creating our own you know, requirements in the future. Simple advantages, like I said, it is managed by experts. Uh, you know, no matter how much I say about it, I think it's 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 less because this is something which is actually a very, very strong tool. They are, it's their job to manage money. It's their job to look at investment options, uh, to look at optimal investment options. And this is that invest money for its investors to create create the optimal returns that, that can be done. So that's something which, which I think is one of the strongest advantages that mutual funds have over individually, any one of us doing. Uh, you know, because mutual funds in any investment scheme predominantly have a diversified portfolio. That means they are exposed to a number of securities, much more than what individually you and I would, uh, would invest into. Uh, this diversification helps in getting some scale. This diversification helps in managing your risk better. And if overall, you know, uh, investments are, are, are turning positive, uh, they start reflecting into your invested scheme too. So it's, it's a, apart from this, there are a lot of other risk management tools also, which any mutual fund, uh, you know, management, manage, management adapts in order to ensure that they are able to manage risk far better in terms of their investment philosophy, in terms of what they can do and what they cannot do. And it may not be a bad idea to have, to have an understanding of those two. Mutual funds are very, very easy to invest. And so it's, it's very honestly hassle-free. It's very easy. And we'll look at how you can invest a little later towards the, towards the end of our session. But it becomes very, very easy for us. And we know over the long term, mutual funds have shown a history of creating wealth. So these should be your predominant reasons of why you must choose mutual funds. And, uh, you know, these, these should be kept in mind whenever you are looking at investment options and then evaluate uh, which mutual fund best suits you, which mutual fund scheme best suits you uh, because of these very, very simple benefits and advantages that it offers over uh, any other investment option. You know, uh, one more route through which we all can invest in mutual funds is the SIP or the systematic investment plan. Route. You know, uh, you have a goal, uh, you have a reason to invest. Systematic investment plans or SIP help you reach your goals by investing a small sum on a regular basis. Predominantly, it's done on a monthly basis, uh, right? Over a long period of time, the SIP route has shown to kick in what is known as a power of compounding. Uh, we all know that compounding effects uh, is something which which SIPs have. Uh, you know, uh, over the long term, this really starts showing. So, for example, there's an example which we put that if you just invest six thousand rupees for a period of thirty five years, right, uh, and every year your average earning about twelve odd percent, you would create something close to about 4 crores, 3.9 crores over this 35 years. Now, I mean, 6,000 rupees uh, is not a great, is not a very, very big sum, right? So in a year, 6 into 12 is 72,000 rupees, multiply that by 35 years, that's your investment. But what you get is 3.9 crores. And you would see this, I mean, if, 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 if you know, if you would just work out the match, you would see that predominantly most of this money gets created in the last 10, 12 years. So staying invested over the long term really pays out and helps this compounding impact to really, really start showing that uh, extra alpha, which, you know, starts becoming magic. So power of compounding is something which we should we should we should allow our investments to to work on to show up and but to and really see this compounding impact it is important to think real long term right so that's that's something which we should all look at uh, you know another benefit of uh, sip is uh, is this concept of rupee cost averaging so markets are volatile right the markets are go, markets go up markets go down it's not something which you and i can control 
but through an SIP route. I am buying every month, month on month, whether the markets are moving up or moving down. And what this actually does is this helps me in averaging out my cost over the long run. So I'm buying on a regular basis, right? I'm buying every, every, every month on a, on a date that I have selected. And this helps me to, to average out or wean out that market movement and come to a, come to a line which is averaged out. And that helps me, you know, in ensuring that whether the markets are up or down, my cost is averaged out because of which I will start seeing returns over the long term. What SIPs also do is it kind of instills consistency and discipline. I mean, it's a very, very simple thing, right? You fill up the SIP mandate form, uh, you know, every month, uh, monthly is, is the most, most, most used, uh, you know, interval. So that is why I'm using the example of monthly. Every month, there is a debit which happens from your bank directly into the scheme that you have selected. And because of this, it's seamless. So it's consistent. It instills a certain level of discipline. And this discipline is something which you see uh, you know, helps you over the long term. So SIPs are a great way for all of us as an investment option. It helps us reach our goals in a, in a piecemeal fashion. It helps us uh, with the magic of compounding over the long term. It helps us average out. We don't know how the markets will go. We don't know what's the, what's the top, what's the bottom. And so timing the market is, is I think, a futile exercise. But if I'm buying at every 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 frequency, it helps me average out, which helps me get an average cost. And it instills a certain, certain uh, a high degree of discipline and consistency. Look at, let's look at types. I mean, when you look at types, predominantly there are two broad types. One has an open-ended scheme in which you can buy and sell at any, uh, whenever you feel like. And then there are close ended where uh, there is a there is a, there is a stipulated majority. It could be five years, seven years, whatever, and it's open in a periodic way. Uh, you know, at the time of launch, uh, you know, specified period, and you can only enter those schemes during that time. So there are two broad types. But I mean, if you look at classification, in classification there are there are five broad categories of mutual fund schemes. One is equity, predominantly investing in equity and equity related schemes. Then there are debt schemes in which you could invest in, in government backed short term schemes like T-bills, uh, government securities, corporate bonds, money markets, various, various fixed income uh, instruments is something if you're investing in those, then they, are no, they, they come under the umbrella of debt schemes. Then there are hybrid schemes where you would have a mixture of equity and debt uh, and uh, you know other asset, asset classes also. Uh, where uh, looking at uh, you know the market sways, so there are some which are dynamic, uh, there are some which are which are fixed, but there are hybrid schemes available. Predominantly, equity and debt are two asset classes in which they have a mixture. Then there are solution-oriented schemes, so there are schemes in the market which are focused towards retirement, uh, towards children's education. So these are also schemes which are available. And then there are the other schemes. Uh, it could be fund of funds, ETFs, various other schemes which are available. And uh, any scheme which doesn't fit into the, the top four comes into the other scheme category. Uh, right. So these are predominantly the classification. Let's look at a further dip into what are the various types of investments into, into these. So for example, when you, when you talk of equity-oriented schemes, uh, equity could be could be categorized as large cap, mid cap, small cap, uh, you know, based on their market cap, uh, you know. So how are they split? So top 100 companies are known as large cap companies, 101 to 250 are known as mid cap, anything beyond 250 known as small cap, uh, you know. So you could have this, you could have a multi cap scheme, which is investing across, uh, you know, across these market cap, uh, across large cap, mid cap, small cap. So they are all, they all come under the market cap of companies. Uh, then there are investment styles. It could be value funds. It could be growth, growth schemes, it could be dividend yielding schemes. It could be contra funds. These are names which are predominantly given where you are investing basis and investment style. Then there is something known as equity linked saving schemes, which comes under uh, tax deduction, which is allowed under tax deduction of ATC. Uh, you know, for the old regime, of course, uh, you know, and uh, over here, your investment has a lock-in for three years. 
uh, it is it is pre, it is invested in equity and uh, predominant investment is in equity and equity related instruments uh, with a through the three year lock in so so that's how ELSS works then there are some sectoral thematics so banking is a sector infrastructure is a theme IT is a sector there are also these other schemes under the equity mutual oriented mutual fund umbrella and you can invest in all of these uh, depending on what your comfort is, uh, depending on what your understanding is, and you know how you look at these schemes and how uh, you look at the future outlook, right? So these are these are the schemes which are there. Similarly, in fixed income schemes, there are there are schemes uh, like liquid schemes. So liquid funds are something uh, which invest in papers maturing in a period not greater than ninety one days, right? So very very short term. Uh, you know, uh, so if you have money, which you know you will use next month, a uh, month and a half later, two months later, uh, then you could park it in liquid schemes because it's it's a very, very short term instrument, uh, you know, where people, where, where papers are just up to 91 days. Uh, because it is it is a short term, it is also, it is also fairly safe uh, in that aspect, uh, you know, in comparison to other schemes. Uh, and hence liquid funds is something which which works on that side then there are there are there are duration schemes non duration schemes could be uh, categorized as ultra short short medium term or long term ultra short is something which looks at investments up to a period of one year uh, short term looks at period between one to three years medium term is something which looks at investments in in securities maturing in a period of three to five years and Long term is predominantly looking at investing into securities or fixed income securities maturing beyond the period of five years. So they are all known as duration funds, uh, you know, various types looking at what your investment horizon is, how long you want to stay invested, looking at uh, what your interest rate calls are or what your understanding on the interest rate scenario is. You may choose to invest in these duration funds. Then there is something known as credit risk funds, which predominantly invests in, in uh, you know, corporate companies, corporate rated companies, predominantly a, a credit risk fund is, is something in which your investments is having, is, is being done in corporate papers rated AA and below. So uh, they provide a little higher return, but they also come with a higher degree of credit risk. So unless you understand the the credit uh, credit risk that is that is there, uh, you know it is not something which is which is advisable for all. To be very honest, because uh, you know the rating over here is 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 a little lower. Uh, so if you're looking at a little higher return uh, from fixed income, then credit funds uh, can be a play which which would look at, but. Uh, there is a higher higher level of risk, which which is which is which is which your investments will get exposed to. Then there are grid funds or government security funds. They invest in uh, government security papers across maturities. So predominantly, if you look at equity and debt, these are your these are your further classifications. These are your further types of schemes, the breakdown of various schemes which are which are there, which are available for all of us to invest into depending upon what my and what my risk appetite is what my requirement in terms of return from my investments are and i can create a portfolio in between the debt oriented mutual fund schemes and equity oriented mutual fund schemes for most of my uh, requirements investment requirements future future or future return requirements if you look at investment options, predominantly there are two options. One is the growth option where you invest, and uh, you know whenever till the time you don't redeem all your investments and your capital uh, capital appreciation is is all part of one pool. And then there is uh, IDCW, which is income distribution come capital withdrawal option, where if you want a certain uh, return on a periodic basis, then the income distribution come capital withdrawal option works. Uh, you know, uh, over here, it, it, the income distribution come capital withdrawal is passed back to you in the form of dividends if there are if there are any realized profits in a mutual fund scheme and they want to pass it back to its investors, they would use the income distribution come capital withdrawal option to pass it back to those investors who have chosen this option. 
right uh, but if you're if you're look, not wanting any returns during your period of investment then i think you should stick to the growth option predominantly because growth would mean that this income distribution come capital withdrawal or dividend which was paid out uh, stays stays within the scheme for you and so because it stays within the scheme for you over the long term because that money is not with you that will also generate certain returns and the growth option then in that sense becomes your your bigger play or your option if you are not looking at having any regular cash flow requirements in terms of taxation we have two predominantly equity oriented schemes and other schemes and equity oriented schemes your your long term capital gains is stacked at 10% over over uh, over exceed exceeding a limit of 1 lakh rupees in a year so if if your capital gains through equity and equity related schemes is over 1 lakh rupees then on the extra over 1 lakh rupees you will be charged 10 lakh rupees your short term is tagged at 15% uh, and all other funds uh, your taxation is basis your tax plan so if you are in a 10% bracket you pay 10% of 20% 20% 30% 30% you know it bases your tax plan uh, so that's predominantly your taxation model. How can you invest? Four predominant options. You could go to a financial advisor who will understand your risk profiling, your requirements, your investment horizon, and this is all of this. Suggest various schemes that you can invest into. Uh, so that's one. You can go to intermediaries, uh, you know, uh, and these intermediaries will help you uh process your transactions and make an investment in the scheme of your choice you could contact an emc representative directly and uh, visit an, an, an emc office and invest invest uh, you know through an emc representative and lastly you can go online to any emc website and uh, choose your scheme uh, you know and uh, make your payment based on the available modes and make your investment decision so four options uh, for all of us, uh, you could choose basis your understanding of which scheme to pick, basis your comfort. If you don't know which scheme to pick, what you should be doing, you can go through an intermediary or an or a financial advisor route. They will help. They will guide you and make you make uh, and help you make the right choice. And uh, yeah, that's just about what I had to share with you uh, on the ABCs of mutual funds. I hope this has helped you develop a higher degree of understanding on mutual funds, uh, cleared or dispelled certain doubts that you may be having. And uh, yeah, I mean, let's look at questions that you may be having. I'd love to respond to your questions and, uh, you know, Once again, if you have any queries or questions, I'll request you to please put it in the chat room. I will respond to each and every question of yours now. It, it seems uh, we don't have any queries and questions. So on that note, I hope I've been able to enhance your understanding with regards to mutual fund and the options and the benefits and advantages that it has over uh, and help you make a better informed decision the next time you are looking at investments so on that note thank you very much for your time as usual it was a pleasure we'll connect once again in the coming month with a new topic uh, with all of you thank you once again see you bye bye Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.